Okay, so uh, right away, so my name is Matthew Waszkowski. I am a student services officer with St. Peter's College. We're affiliated to the University of Saskatchewan. Um, so I'm, I'm quite fluent with both systems and with um, with students who are going from grade 12 to university particularly and help, help them with being able to finance that. So there's tons of different options available that are out there. A couple of deadlines are starting to approach right now. And so I'm just here to give you some of that information and some additional tips and stuff like that to be able to assist with that. Uh, so really quickly, a brief agenda that we're going to be doing. Uh, you can see the agenda there for yourself. I see a couple other people just joined in. So feel free to type in the Q&A if you have a question. So we actually be going over like what the estimated cost of an education is in Saskatchewan. Uh, we'll be going over funding options. I'll be giving you an actual breakdown of those sources and like how much you can get and what you need to know about those. I've kind of broken it down into four different areas as you'll see. And then we'll talk about things you can do to actually get a little bit of an advantage as you go through the process. A lot of this is very much like grant and scholarship and bursary related, but then there's also some additional things to kind of keep in mind here. So um, in order to understand, you know, how you can best afford your education and, you know, pay less debt, get less debt out of it, we have to understand like, you know, what's the real value cost? What do you have to actually pay uh, to become a university student? Um, so I've kind of broken it down into a couple different things here. Um, this is assuming a first year student with no savings whatsoever. Um, I'll be talking about like St. Peter's College. I have some numbers up here on the screen, as you can see. Um, the tuition is very much an estimate. This is all these tuition estimates you're going to see for all these institutions. It's going to be what's called a full load, which is basically taking as many classes as you kind of can and pretty much should take. Um, so with St. Peter's College, you've, I've kind of broken down how much our there we go, how much the, it costs. So if you're looking to be a student and you're not living at home, like you're doing rent, like I've just thrown some estimates up there. You could argue that it should be higher some places, lower in some places. It's just to give you an idea. Um, school related costs are actually the minority there. So your living costs are gonna be the most. Um, if you're able to stay at home or stay local, um, whether that's in Saskatoon or here or Regina or wherever, I've, you know, there's a reason you wanna to go to your local community college. You save a lot of money with that. And there's typically some additional other benefits as well. Um, so everything else there is a live-in related cost is what we end up calling that. Um, again, that's a tuition estimate there. It just depends. You'll notice that our fees are pretty low because of course you're not paying for a bus pass and stuff like that. Um, all the classes here are University of Saskatchewan classes. Now going on to the main campus, uh, if any of you are from Saskatoon, um, their tuition's a little bit more expensive. Like it's it's not by a lot. I mean, you'll you'll save a couple percent. It's nothing too big. The fees are a little bit higher, but again, you're getting more out of that. So you know, you're getting a bus pass and um, you're paying for a campus newspaper and stuff like that. So your fees and tuition are a little bit higher, but you get a little bit more different options there as well. Um, other than that, you know, I've just left the same numbers there. You guys will all have different living circumstances. You'll have a better idea about how, you know, how much you should budget and whatnot. Um, the tuition is very much fluctuating depending on what you study. Um, you know, it could be as low as the examples that they have here are 6,600, as low as 6,600. And if you're in engineering where you take more than that full load I was talking about, it goes up a little bit. So it, it varies, it varies. Um, but that tuition has gone up just a little bit there if you're a main campus student or you're looking at the main campus. Now, I, I don't know a whole lot about U of R. Um, I just put in some example numbers here. I'm not a representative of their institution. I'm not actually sure how much their fees are. I looked at a giant chart and I couldn't figure it out to save my life. Um, but again, so here's the SPC-ish uh, cost here. Here's USAS cost, here's Eurogina cost. Either way, you're living uh, costs are going to be at least half, if not more. So if you can reduce those, that's awesome. The tuition though, that one's going to be quite constant. You pay for a class and there's no way around that really. So we have an idea about how much things cost now. Where can you actually get this fund in here? Now, I see a couple of um, people who've been to our open houses here as well. So you might've seen this slide before that I've done. Um, this is kind of the funding breakdown. I'll actually give you an example of how much like each of these offer. Um, but these are all the different options that we typically tell students to focus on first. There's other streams of revenue here to pay for your university and for like, you know, those living expenses and whatnot. This is assuming you have no savings whatsoever, zero. Um, so USAS, they offer three different ways that you can get some additional money. Uh, St. Peter's College offers a lot of additional scholarships as well. Um, 
you could you, if you're going to St. Peter's College, you actually get access to all of your main campus scholarships as well. Uh, so you get two pots to dip in there. If you're going to just main campus, you 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 can kind of forego what's in the dark blue there. Uh, the government, whether or not you plan to do a student loan, you have a couple options here. Uh, if if you if you are planning on doing a student loan, we do officially recommend that you go with the Saskatchewan government student loan if possible, the student loan there. I'll show you where to find that and some additional stuff there. The reason being for that is that um, that offers some additional benefits that something like a line of credit wouldn't. So we'll get into those in just a little bit. And then there's other sources. Those are just some, you know, three primary ones. There's a whole bunch of other sources as well, which we'll be covering about. Now, if I was to take down, like, you know, we saw that big bar, we saw that big bar there of about, um, you know, 18, 19, $20,000 here. This is where you're actually going to get that funding from. If I was to split what you see here, the bigger it is, the more likely you're going to actually get that money. Um, now, some of you might be familiar. I'm going to go back one slide really quick. Some of you might be familiar with that best and brightest scholarship on the top part of uh, or the, the middle part of the USASC one. Well, if you know about that, you know, well, that's a lot of money. That's the big bucks right there. But the average student doesn't actually see that. So that's why it's so minimal there. This is what the average student breakdown would be. And again, if you're just going to the main campus, you could ignore the dark blue stuff there. But if you're going to St. Peter's College, you can add that in. <clears throat> As you can see, government, uh, we assume that for the average student, loans make up approximately like 50 to 60 to 70% of what you're going to need. Uh, because as you go in, especially if you're a grade 12 student right now, and you go into university, there is a lot of money out there. The entire point of that is a lot of institutions will put a lot of that money right up front, get you to come for your first year, and then you're kind of committed. So they instead of splitting it up for four years, a lot of students get most of their uh, additional funding right at the very front of their academic career. So we're going to be breaking down these four sources here. So we're going back to this little page here. I'm going to be breaking down the University of Saskatchewan really, really quickly and give you some additional details on these things. I see a couple other people just joined. So, um, you know, if you have a question, feel free to type into the Q and the A. Okay, so first is the Guaranteed Entrance Scholarship. So again, if you are going to the University of Saskatchewan or St. Peter's College, you're gonna get this. It's literally, it's literally in the title, it's guaranteed. So what that actually means is that you apply to the university, you get accepted. And if, you're, if your high school average fits into one of those little four areas there, and it doesn't count all your classes, you know, it only counts five classes. They use a formula, it works out in your favor. Sorry to all the gym teachers out there, but a university doesn't really care how you did in gym. They care more about how you did in math and science and English and stuff like that. Um, so they're going to look at your grades as you apply. And then they're going to look at your grades once you actually graduate high school. Whichever one's higher, they're going to give you the amount there. So whatever happens, it works out in your favor. You don't need to apply for this. If you've been accepted to the University of Saskatchewan, boom, there's your money. It's yours. Now we talked about those best and brightest scholarships before. Um, those awards range at the minimum 12,000 and at the maximum 40,000. And it's, a, it's a, over four years. For most of those scholarships, I call those the free ride. Congratulations, your tuition is basically all paid for, if not completely paid for. The downside with those though, is there's only 48 of them. So out of the, I don't know, four, five, 6,000 students who apply to the University of Saskatchewan every single year, only 48 of those students at best are actually going to get that money. And it's a lot of money there, but that's why the average student doesn't really see it. You have to be part of a very select few, and you typically need to have a really good story, you need to have some really good grades, and you need to have some really good um, work in your community or passions to be able to become eligible for that money. We recommend you apply, but it's kind of too late anyways, because the deadline was December. And then finally is the competitive entrance awards. This is right now, if any of you are looking about considering applying to the University of Saskatchewan or have already applied to the University of Saskatchewan, you need to get on it immediately. Uh, those end March 1st. That is the bulk of the fund in there. U of S gives about $13 million every single year in scholarships. Um, and the majority of it comes to those competitive entrance scholarships. There are literally hundreds of awards that go from $500 to $44,000. There are some full rides in that uh, list as well. I'll give you some uh, tips on how to actually like navigate that menu here. Um, oops. Here we go. So I'll quickly show you this here. 
So the competitive entrance scholarships, there is a whole bunch of them here. So you can actually go in and you can select by college. If you're an egg bio student, congratulations. There's some that are specifically for you. Um, you know, if you're an Aboriginal student or a student with a disability or an athlete, there's different ones in there for you. Alternatively though, you really can just go through the list and click, click, click and take a look and see. Again, I'll give you some more tips about that after. Okay, so that's what the U of S. Now we're gonna go into that next little part here. Uh, if you're looking at doing St. Peter's College, um, again, there's some additional fund in there that is available to you. And so, like I said before, all the students at St. Peter's College are eligible to keep their main campus, University of uh, Saskatchewan scholarships as well, because you're, U, you're a U of S student here taking U of S classes and doing a U of S program. You're just choosing to do it at a different location. So you get some of that additional fund in there. Um, I'll give you some additional details here about us. So last year we awarded over $90,000, um, but we offer up to 200,000. Like there's additional like accelerate scholarships and indigenous scholarships and stuff like that, that not always get, that don't always get claimed. So our average applicant, not the average recipient, the average person who applied for our scholarships got $1,800 um, over the last few years. That number changes a little bit depending on the year, but that tends to be what the average is. So we don't know why, like we typically have like, you know, like that 100 to 150 student range every single year. Um, and only like 50 of them ever apply every single year. We don't know why we're trying to do a better job at that. Hence why we're doing this. So if you apply for our scholarships, there's a very good chance that you'll get some significant money involved with that. There's options for uh, incoming, returning, exiting, upper years and indigenous students. And we also have some stuff for even students who are currently in grade 11 or grade 12. So going on here to the government, <clears throat> we kind of split these up into two different places. One's the student loans and then one's grants. Uh, with the, the difference between these is a loan is something that you pay back with interest. You know, here's, you know, here's $20, go buy what you want. You owe me $25 later. A grant is here's $20, that's yours. It is a gift to be used for your education. You do not have to pay it back. We always tell our students apply for grants. It is basically free money. It is free money. So the application for these open sometime in June or July, it, it changes. Follow us on Facebook and we'll make sure that you're aware of it. Um, the applications for it are free as well. So even if you're unsure if you'll get accepted or not, apply anyways. You just lose out on 20 minutes of your time and you have the potential to earn you know, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars um, in low interest or no interest or in free money. Um, allocation amounts are typically based on parental incomes, different circumstances have different things, but that, you know, average student, that's what it tends to be based around. Um, if you are denied, because you can be denied, most people are accepted for something, but you can be denied. There are still other options. Uh, the most common one is typically a line of credit with a local bank. They all have different interest rates and stuff like that. But typically, we, you want to try to avoid that if you can, because you're usually paying interest while you're a student. With a Saskatchewan student loan one, um, with a government one, you don't pay interest. Your interest does not accumulate while you're a student. It's when you're no longer a student that you're making those payments. Whereas with the line of credit, you're going to be paying, uh, you know, it just depends on what you have, but you know, 50, 60, 70, $80 every single month uh, for however long you're a student. So over four years, that adds up to be a significant amount. So you want to go for the government low or no interest loans whenever possible. You will literally save yourself thousands of dollars. <clears throat> Um, there are additional funding opportunities as well. Like, you know, if you're a student with a permanent disability and there's a whole other list of categories there, there's lots of different awards and scholarships and stuff that the government offers. Whoops. Um, so we talked about those grants before. Let's say you have enough money from your scholarships and, you know, you've saved some money and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that free money sounds enticing. Well, good news is you can actually apply to Saskatchewan student loans. And at the very end of it, there's a little box that you just tick and you say, I don't want the loan. I don't care about that. I have enough, but I want that free money that this guy in Zoom is talking about. There's an option for that. You can get that free money. Um, now, some other things that they offer here they offer some awards, some grants, and some scholarships here. There's lots of different ones there. 
So for these awards, again, there's a whole bunch here. I won't, I won't go through all of every single one of them. Like you'll be able to do that, but there's a ton of different money. There's tons of money there for students. There's lots of grants and bursaries here, um, depending on what you want to do. And then there are also scholarships. And there's even more options than that. Another thing that um, doesn't really matter for a lot of you right now, but in a couple of years it will, the graduate retention program, that is a lot of money that you get to keep if you, if you stay here. So there's lots of money available for you um, through the government. So they're really fantastic for that. They've done a lot of work over the last decade. And then finally, there's other sources here. Again, this is just whatever other options there are, but typically your local school will have some scholarships for graduating students. It depends on the school and how much and whatnot. You know, and sometimes it might only be a hundred or $200, but hey, that's hundred or $200 of free money. Like th th that only helps. And then across the entire nation, there's been $3 million-ish of Canadian scholarship amounts not claimed in the last two years. That's a, that's a statistic from like two or three years ago, but I assume that it holds quite similar still. I've given you a couple websites there that are really good places to start. There is tons of scholarship money out there and a lot of them don't get applicants. If you're the only one who applies, you're gonna get the money. So if you wanna take a screenshot or a picture of those, I'll leave that up there for just one second for you to be able to do that. And then finally, some local companies offer scholarships um, and some are also continuing scholarships like BHP, uh, the BHP mine, they offer like, I think it's like $2,000. And if you won that already from grade 12, you can keep winning that for multiple years. We have lots of students who do that and they don't really like, they just kind of forget that detail. Um, so you like really read the descriptions of whatever scholarships you get quite carefully because a lot of them do have those and you can get more money in, in, another, in another year as long as you maintain a blah average or you're a, a full-time student still. So the, you want to make sure you keep a notice of that. And then your employer may offer some scholarships um, like the co-op for Humboldt, for example. I know they're really good. They, they do a lot of scholarships for their students. Um, so you want, if, if you're dealing with a bit of like a medium or larger sized organization, I bet you that they have something along the lines there for a scholarship that you can actually do. Um, now, in terms of something you can do to be able to get an advantage here, again, I won't talk too much about it. I know we're kind of actually approaching the end of the time here, but what you can do is you need to get organized. Straight up, that's, that's step number one. You need to actually go through, look at all the different options out there and start keeping track of these. Like, I think I'm eligible for this one. I think I'm eligible for this one and figure out what you need for them. There are some times where you can reuse some items. And then there's other times where you, you know, changing a few sentences there might be very helpful. So if you approach like a, um, like a teacher, for example, and you say, Yo, hey, I need these four things and like three of them are similar, that would really help out speed along that process for you and the teacher. Start in early and send in early is quite important too. Start in early because, you know, if any of you are right now who are currently planning on going to USASC or here and you haven't started applying for scholarships, everyone is going to rush your teacher the week before the deadline or the day before the deadline. You're not going to get a good letter. You might not get a letter at all if you're rushing that teacher, just like everyone else. Be early, avoid the crowd. And honestly, send in it early, it, it will only help your chances. The end of the day, you know, if you have a stack this big of resumes and you're hiring one person, it's probably going to be the person not near the top of that list. That's just how it goes. It's it's human nature. I recommend an hour a week. If you're in grade 12, you do one hour a week. I guarantee you, you will be laughing and have a completely paid education for your first year. And when you do these letters, you want to really highlight your interests and, and your passions and accomplishments. You know, what do you really hope to do? What's a group that you really like, that you try and champion? Stuff like that. It goes a really long way. And being creative, um, you know, instead of doing like an essay, you could do a short video, include some pictures in this essay, show some proof of that. You know, make yourself stand out from that crowd. Again, if there's a list this big, you want to, you want to be the one who stands out. Um, and this is another thing as well. A lot of people think that, you know, oh, there's four requirements there, but I only meet three of them. Apply anyways. If you meet most of the requirements, you're kind of the candidate that they're looking for anyways. You don't need to be the picture perfect candidate. Worst comes to worst, they say no. Best comes to best, you get some free money that you wouldn't have gone, uh, gotten elsewise. So why wouldn't you go out and do that? Whoops. Sorry, I'm just grabbing something. And... There we go. 
And then, so finally here for continuing students. So like I said before, most of that money is kind of upfront. You get it right when you start your uh, university from grade 12 to high school, or if you're a mature learner, you know, just entering your first year of university, a lot of that funding does dry up, but that's why it's even more important to make sure you're staying on top of it. Like that one hour a day, because honestly, once a lot of students get into university, like a, there's a lot of applications for scholarships in the first year, but after that, a lot of people just let it go. They don't do anything. So there's fewer scholarships, but there's a lot less competition. So as long as you're being diligent, um, and you're able to highlight your skills quite well and highlight your achievements quite well. And, and frankly, you're putting the time in to get the good grades and get in those achievements. Um, your options actually do go up quite a bit. So you really want the, re the really focus on your academic and personal merit. This is where like, you know, the volunteer experience and you're a good student and you champion this initiative goes a long way, much further than it would have done in, in grade 12, for example. And this is another thing a lot of people really forget on. Um, of course, you want to save money during the summer. We just established how much university can cost, and depending on the like, depending on whatever institution you go to, whether that's like as a trade or um, you know a university or like a college like us or wherever, you're you're paying money. You're paying a significant amount of money, no matter what anyone tells you. Um, so that's why you want to make sure you're saving some money up. And the typically provincial summer jobs, like ones done by the government, they pay fairly well. Um, and you can get into them as like with low or no skills, um, depending on the job. Some of them give you excellent experience for your future career. Um, and really those start opening up as soon as October. I know it's kind of silly where like if you're a grade 12 student right now in here, and you get accepted, you're, you do your first year of university, boom, it's October. Now you have to look at like summer jobs. I know it's really odd, but that's just when it opens up. Some of them open up, some of them open up a little bit later. But um, if you're waiting till like March or April to start looking at a summer job, you've already lost 90% of the jobs. Most people are hiring months in advance for that. So that's just something you want to kind of keep in mind here. Um, and there's just different scholarship deadlines there. Um, like I said, th th this goes back to that previous tip I talked about. You need to keep organized with scholarships. If you put a little bit of time in every single day, you can absolutely get your, your education paid for quite significantly. And uh, with interest, no matter how low the interest it is, interest still adds up. And so the more scholarships and bursaries and awards you can get, you will save yourself significantly more over time. So what I'm going to do now, I've just put a little link into the chat here. If you're interested, you can uh, click on that link and be able to, you know, put yourself in for a quick prize draw and stuff. But it's also an opportunity for you to be able to ask me some stuff like, hey, I want more information on this or this or this or this program. Um, so there's an option there to be able to do that in there. That said, I'm also going to be available uh, for the next couple minutes. So I'm technically done this presentation, but if you want to talk to me, you should fill out that app, uh, that little uh, survey there because we, we do a prize draw. Now you can though also contact me by phoning this number. So I'll be available on this line. So if you phone that number, once this, um, this thing's done, you'll actually be able to talk directly to me just in case you have any questions. Um, but otherwise, thanks for coming out today. It's nice to see that there's so many people who are interested in this, um, which you should be. Save yourself a bunch of money. But otherwise, thanks for your interest here. Uh, like I said, make sure you fill out that thing in the chat. You get a prize draw. It gives you an opportunity to ask me for more information. Um, but if you also want to talk directly to me, you can phone me right now and you'll be able to talk to me. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone, for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful evening and stay warm out there.